So we're doing a talk today on the difference between drug use generation to generation. This generation has brought a whole new group of challenges to the world and the way that drugs are made, the way that drugs are used, and the way that drugs are distributed. We actually have a young person here in studio. We're not gonna show him on camera, but we are going to have him talk to us and share his viewpoint because he has some incredible insights on drugs in this day and age. So we're talking about research chemicals. So before, you know, a couple years ago, um, you used to be able to just go right on the dark web and order whatever illegally, you know, and that's where cryptocurrency came out, Bitcoin, all this stuff, right? And so you would buy your drugs from the dark web, have them delivered right to your house, which was illegal, and then they started catching on to this, right? Yeah, Silk Road was... Uh... Down. They started cracking down on the um, people that were importing drugs that were already illegal, and they cracked down on a lot of the dark web websites um, and they're a lot quicker on websites now so you are kind of trying your luck when it comes to um, trying to find a reputable supplier like Russian roulette basically right. so now now they are distributing these research chemicals so how could you find, like, where do you find the information to find these research chemicals to use as drugs? Um, well, for a lot of the drugs, the vendors online will have probably a, usually like a short description. Like, about, a, like a chemical makeup? Yeah, they'll have usually like a chemical makeup of the drug, a, um, I believe it's a UAPC name, which is just like the absolute chemical name in like how you would uh, find that chemical in like any chemical database. Um, and then... So you're talking about the actual scientific makeup. Yeah, so the like, you can have them list like the scientific makeup or it or also just a description of the effects of the chemical or the product that you're trying to purchase so rather than just on the street right trying to buy whatever um whatever you would buy on the street oh man this coke is good or whatever and it's right. like instead you see this um you can look at it and um, notice similarities if you're like if you are more knowledgeable on the topic you can notice similarities in different chemicals and how they might bind to um, receptors in the brain or um, as I said with just like you would have to find a reputable vendor that has description of their products that is um, reliably or somewhat reliably accurate since you can't really truly yeah. rely on that. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, the reliability of somebody, mm -hmm. basically you're, you're putting their faith in your hands, but you know, how long have, has research chemicals been out a long time? I know that studies and R and D, but like street level. On the street level, they've been here a while but not for very long, What's a, like not very widely. Five, ten? The first, the first most widely known one was probably bath salts, um, so okay. cathinone and like synthetic cathinones. Yes, I remember that. That's been about ten then. So yeah, I had bath salts? That usually, that was about the first, um, that was probably one of the first major times that we heard about synthetic drugs like in the media so yeah bath salts that was when people were like going crazy and eating, eating people's faces. faces off and stuff like that yeah so that's that's pretty insane but those things like the bath salts you could get them in like the smoke shops so can you buy these research chemicals in your local smoke shops um well 
now a lot of the U.S. has the Federal Analog Act, so it makes it a lot more difficult to sell those types of things, um, especially in shops where they have to be regulated mm -hmm. by um, the state or yeah, local by government, sellers, government, consumers, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, however, you see a lot of specifically with synthetic cannabinoids in the UK and over in Europe, there are um, there are a lot of people that are switching from using heroin in the UK and Europe to using synthetic cannabinoids because they're stronger and more powerful and have like more um, a stronger effect. And you mean tell me the synthetic? cannabinoids is that's like a, a weed molecule right yeah so basically it's stronger than heroin um there have been people that like um were not told that certain strains of it were like a certain strength and so if they didn't have a tolerance there have been like um children like middle schoolers smoking it thinking that it's like oh this is just similar to weed because all of the news around it is just like synthetic cannabinoids so people just think oh it's basically like fake weed it's gonna feel like weed but in reality it's only a synthetic cannabinoid because it's working on the cannabinoid receptor but now with the strength of it um it's having completely different um effects than cannabis would on any person it has given people like seizures from the wow. strength of it and like how strong some of these synthetic cannabinoids are so people are actually having seizures and from dying. this and dying from this synthetic weed like overdosing on it overdosing on it wow what? that so, is so crazy that is crazy yeah so you pretty much can't overdose on normal weed you'd have right the plant more than right. your body weight yeah right right um even with like thc extract like um taking like even if you ate like probably your own body weight in edibles it'd still be a little bit difficult to like for the thc to have enough of an effect on your brain to cause damage but with the like how strongly the synthetic cannabinoids stimulate your cannabinoid receptors they're doing things that like plants couldn't even like come close to replicating right so these aren't plants at all these synthetic cannabinoids this is not no, no this is some science this is a scientist in the laboratory it's chemicals being sprayed onto if you're lucky some hemp if not it's going to be some random spice maybe some like oregano or some plant material that they can just spray it onto right so you can smoke it Wow. Okay. So, what else? This is this is crazy. Uh, what other kind of synthetic research chemicals are are popular out there that people are using? Well, one of the biggest ones is, and also probably the oldest, is fentanyl, which um, is a synthetic opioid, as many may know, and now there are well they had before but now it's like more common to see um analogs of fentanyl and there are analogs of fentanyl that are like 50 to 100 times stronger than fentanyl itself car, which is car already fentanyl. yeah car fentanyl, so but is, fentanyl i thought was created you know by scientists for hospitals for you know surgery and and things like that well it was originally created for that and it is still used for that especially um, with people who have very high opioid tolerances who are like people who might be going through cancer treatments and they would normally be having to put on like like a hundred milligrams of like dilaudid or something like that and it's like just not working anymore and they can use fentanyl since it's a much more potent um, drug so it actually will relieve the pain but it becomes extremely dangerous when used 
with people who are either uninformed or they don't know what they're like doing when they're dosing or they don't know the risks of fentanyl and just how small of an amount can really kill you. So you can literally buy this fentanyl fentanyl, fentanyl online? Um, well, there are places where you can order online, but to get it shipped into the U.S. is getting increasingly harder. The main importers of it right now are in Mexico, the cartels. Mm -hmm. They're basically, um, they're doing what we can't. They're importing the, um, chemicals that are needed to make fentanyl since the chemical, since actually fentanyl has been, like, um, banned even in Mexico. Um, mm -hmm. so, like, they are just moving on to the ingredients to make fentanyl and they're buying those overseas. So it's like they're making like bathtub fentanyl. Yeah, basically. And yeah, like the crank of meth kind and, of thing. Yeah, and as um, as the government like goes down the list of like ingredients, they're just using like ingredients of that ingredient. So like if you had um, like say um glacial acetic acid is a very highly regulated product um glacial ac acetic acid yes okay it's very highly re very highly regulated because um it's used to create many different drugs um so you have to like be so there are very few vendors online that sell it, and you have mm -hmm. to be verified. Um, you have to have all types of certificates and stuff. But if you wanted to, you could go online and find what you would need to make glacial acetic acid. Wow. So you take the, the main ingredients and find what you need to make it. So these are just like young scientists here who are just like making their own drugs basically they're like you can yeah you can do that and a lot of them now are like older a lot of them that have been like doing this type of thing for a while so they're like they basically have First of all, they have a head start in the game, mm -hmm. and they also, um, I'd assume with a lot of the bigger vendors, are probably, um, like, they're a more of a network instead of run by one person, so if one node of it gets taken down, there's still a couple of branches left to try and reform things, so, like, Kind of with almost like organized crime, but online. Right. So it's like organized drug dealing online. Like networking. Networking. Yeah. Wow. That is so crazy and so dangerous. I mean, this just opens up so many avenues for so many different things. Yeah. And the new substance is being created. Like, there isn't information on them. So a lot of people are when they're using these drugs, they're being their own human guinea pigs. And right. And they're testing these drugs out on themselves to see if it's good. Some of them are, like, doing this to try and sell it. So, like, that's how a lot of fake Molly got out on there because people were testing out different drugs and were like, hey, this feels pretty close to Molly and it's a lot cheaper, so I could probably just buy a whole bunch of this put it in some pills, say that it's Molly, and sell it. Nobody but then tell. people are, like, not doing the research on what damages these chemicals could do in comparison to, like, other older chemicals. Because um, a lot of the research that we have, like, the like reasons that we know um, things damage your brain, like reasons why Molly, MDMA... Um, is neurotoxic like we didn't know that for a long time until we started seeing people that were like using it a lot and started to have mental deficits and like would just like 
your brain would just start to deteriorate from it. Um, Cause you could be, if like, you could be using something where you could use Molly that frequency and that amount and your brain can heal and be fine. But this drug that feels almost exactly the same, you right. can't tell the difference based on feeling it. Um, can completely like permanently give like you horrible brain damage wow that is insane i mean you think that you know people would get have had these effects already from all the drugs that have already come through but this is just a, a heightened really like security issue that you know how do we stop this like how does how how do we stop these kind of things? How do we protect our, our young generation, our children, um, our family from getting involved in this and, and getting these kind of fake drugs? The biggest thing that I think people can do is harm reduction, spreading information, because as long as there is a demand for drugs and substances, there's always going to be somebody who's going to try and supply it. So it's just always going to be a game of cat and mouse. So the best thing that you can do is to just inform um, people that you care about that might be, um, that you might think could be doing these things. So like, um, it's starting out as low as in middle school, because I've seen, um, I, there was this one middle schooler that literally was like, got to the point where she was smoking meth and like, it was crazy to see someone who was like 14 or 15, like just going down that type of path so aggressively because like, that was something that I was able to see like the transformation in, even though I was not around that area for a long time. Um, in the few months that I was consecutively there, I saw like the complete downfall of someone that was only in middle school using things like meth. Wow. So educating early and harm reduction by harm reduction, you mean spreading awareness, spreading education? Spreading, yeah, spreading awareness. Like so many people now don't know that fentanyl is in everything, not just in, not just in um, fake opiates, like fake Roxy's, fake perks, things like that. It's in everything now, like um, in South America and Central America, there is a new thing going around called 2CB, not um, the actual chemical 2CB, which is a psychedelic. Um, it's a mix of a bunch of different drugs. It's some, so on like the best end, the highest quality end that you can get, you might be getting um, like an opiate like oxycodone or something like that, hopefully not fentanyl. Um, mixed with a stimulant and then actually <coughs> also a psychedelic or a hallucinogenic drug. So they might mix together, say, um, meth, some MDMA, some fentanyl, and uh, a little bit of LSD all together and put a little bit of pink dye in it and call it 2CB, but like, it's not 2CB and people don't know that and they might buy it thinking it is and like people just don't know what they're getting. Um, right. So we need to have people be testing their substances if they're gonna buy it, you need to get test kits, not right. just for fentanyl. So having test kits be, be widely available, drug testing kits be widely available for um, people to see like what they're actually getting because of the large amount of diverse chemicals that they are putting in drugs now yes. not just fentanyl but so many other dangerous combinations and then another thing um, 
labs that you can get um, like pills sent into. So there's a huge issue with um, very highly dosed MDMA pills in um, everywhere right now, actually. So they're like basically overdosed and people don't know and they're taking them and overdosing on Molly, which can have permanent brain damage. Right. Um, and you can actually die from it. And a lot of people, like, I personally, at first, was not aware that you could really overdose and die from MDMA. And then I did more research into it. Um, and I was like, oh, wow. Um, I didn't know all of this stuff. And right. you can, one, die from just MDMA, but two, again, with the research chemicals, um, like, the, like, you can get fake MDMA. There's a specific one um, called PMA or PMMA, um, and it acts, it doesn't have the same serotonin releasing properties that molly does but it has the same serotonin like reuptake inhibiting so mm -hmm. it makes it so that your brain keeps all that serotonin so you'll get serotonin syndrome but you won't have that good feeling or that stimulated feeling so you might end up taking um another pill because you're thinking oh this was just a weak pill of molly but right. it wasn't even molly it was wow. something completely different wow that is that is crazy and that's you know that's been a risk forever you know because you also don't know how it's going to react with yourself like i myself um i remember you know overdosing on uh on ecstasy on um and when i i had gone to the hospital and it was actually some kind of like canadian cough syrup that i happened to be allergic to and just so happened that was a bad, you know, it was bad a bad. bad, you know, it was bad for me. Maybe not bad for somebody else, but my body happened to have an allergy to that cough medicine, whatever that they had put in it. And I got very, very sick. So yeah, that's another thing that can happen, everybody's bodies react differently. Mm -hmm. And um, with older, more widely known and like, research drugs like cocaine we know the exact um chemical pathways like how it's being broken down how it's working in the brain but newer drugs we don't know all of this stuff so right. we don't know the long-term damages that could be um being done right now wow well thank you so much for this like eye-opening and educating talk um, and information um, this is something that everybody needs to know about and so you guys please share this video with your friends um, Share it with your family share it with your children because you just never know um, You know the drug world is getting crazier and crazier and we have just got to we've got to be careful We've got to be more educated and we've got to keep our, our eyes open for all of this stuff. So awesome